Hi everyone, it's Nick. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Okay, in this video today, we are gonna to be talking about things that I wish builders would stop doing. These are my gripes towards things that builders and developers do in modern homes that I think are actually really annoying. Now, let me be clear. I have a ton of respect for people that work in the industry. I can't do what you do. This is just my hope that maybe we can raise some awareness about some things that I think I find annoying and I have a feeling I'm not alone on some particular design choices that are made that are really irritating and difficult to swap out. So I'm not talking about really like aesthetic choices like okay I don't like the lights that you did or something that's not really a huge big deal but when you sometimes feel like you're locked in to some certain kind of design decisions that were made by the builder they can be really expensive to swap out especially if they're not your style so these are the things that I wish builders would stop doing so that it becomes easier to renovate some of these places or change them out and make them more your own without feeling so locked in to some of these decisions that they made let's get going okay first on my list is going to be doors that require a barn door specifically looking at bathrooms because it has been well documented that a I don't like barn doors that's just my own personal opinion if you like them that's cool but I really don't like barn doors on a bathroom for obvious reasons for sound for smell for all sorts of reasons these are why I do not like barn doors on a bathroom but what really gets me is when builders create rooms where the only door you can put on it pretty much except for a pocket door but those are kind of expensive and really difficult to do and sometimes those don't even make a lot of sense is when you're stuck with a barn door and I Ooh, I hate that. And this is honestly a question that I get all the time on my channel. So this is something I'm definitely not alone on because every day I feel like I get someone saying, Nick, I have a room that I have to put a barn door on because I can't swing the door in because it hits to millwork a toilet, I don't know. I can't go out because otherwise it blocks the entire hallway or whatever, it just doesn't make sense. And there's not enough room for a pocket door. I have absolutely no choice but to do a barn door. What do I do? And I go, I don't know, I'm not a wizard, I can't change. Like you have some options, like I usually recommend, can you do a pocket door? And they're like, eh, probably not, or yeah, it doesn't make sense. Or, And you know what, there's like very few options. You're kind of stuck. Yes, if you want to put in some barn doors, because some farmhouse people love the barn doors, then that's fine. I don't necessarily think that's the worst thing ever. There's, a lot, there's clearly a market for it. Clearly some customers, some people, some homeowners are looking for those types of doors. So sure, put them in, but give the option for people to be actually able to swap about that barn door, people like me, and put in something different because some of us don't like barn doors and we don't want them anymore. And we're stuck because you locked us into a floor plan that made it so we have no choice. And that's very frustrating. So consider just changing your space plan so that you have other options. Come on. Okay, number two, a design decision that builders make that really, really, really annoys me is Jack and Jill bathrooms. I don't think, I cannot believe this is true, but in the last, like, I don't know, year and a half or whatever I've had a channel, I have never complained about Jack and Jill bathrooms, which is shocking because I can't stand them. You know, here's the deal with the Jack and Jill bath. We're on the bathroom trend here for a little bit, so bear with me. You know, there's nothing in this world that is scarier than when you go to someone's house, let's say it's for a party or something, and you go in to the bathroom to do your business, and maybe while you're in there, you then realize it's a Jack and Jill bathroom and you didn't check if the other door was not locked. There is nothing more terrifying when you're... <laughs> When you're there and you don't know if the other door is locked and you can hear voices because it's a party and people are, the voices are getting louder and you're like, this is the moment where I'm gonna be mortified. Their Jack and Jill bathrooms are stupid. There should be one entrance in, one exit in a bathroom. I cannot stand Jack and Jill. But the thing is, is that people put them in, oftentimes, again, it's about space plan. They didn't have a plan for what they were going to do with the bathroom and they kind of just put it there and they realized based on the space plan and the way that the floor plan is all situated, they had no choice but to put in Jack and Jill. It never should have two doors is all I'm saying. So please, please builders, rejig the floor plan and get rid of the Jack and Jill. They are rarely, never a good idea. And I, I just can't stand them personally. They're anxiety inducing. And so please just get rid of them and replace them with a better floor plan that doesn't have a Jack and Jill. That's what I'm asking for. Because once you're stuck with one, it's your whole floor plan is sort of built in to this. And so what are you supposed to do? Like, you, what are you gonna do? That's it, you're stuck with it forever. It's honestly reason enough for me to like not buy a house is if they have a Jack and Jill. I'm like, I'm out. 
grab the agent, we're out of here. Okay, third is going to be corner fireplaces. So corner fireplace, I love fireplaces. First of all, I love the fact that you have one. That's great, that's a wonderful thing. If you have a fireplace, that's awesome. But the corner fireplace, I feel like this was really popular in the 90s and 2000s. I feel like they've learned the lesson, so thank you builders. I feel like I'm seeing these a lot less than I used to, which is an awesome thing. So the corner fireplace is awkward because no one ever really knows what to put above them. No one really knows what to do with that little corner. You can't really kind of jazz it up. You can kind of put a piece of art over top. I've seen some good renovations that sort of use the corner fireplace, but honestly, they're like never a good idea. They're never the optimal place to put a fireplace, in my personal opinion. The fireplace is a wonderful focal point to put in your living room. If you are blessed to have one, then that is an awesome thing. But what is really irritating is when you have one that's stuck in the corner, which makes it for a really horrible focal point for the rest of the room. So in my opinion, I think there are better ways to structure a fireplace. I would love to see it right as the focal point in the center of the room, maybe something asymmetrical with the fireplace or with a mantle or something like that. That can be really cool in a contemporary space. But the corner fireplace, in my opinion, is rarely the optimal place to put a fireplace. And again, what are, what's the theme of this video? Annoying to change out. Once you are changing, especially if it is a gas fireplace or honestly, it doesn't even matter, like any fireplace to be honest, unless it's one of those really like not so great electric ones, it's really difficult to move it, right? You're now moving a gas line which is probably your pulling permits and you're gonna have like it's a whole thing we all know it's a whole thing to move a fireplace especially a gas or wood burning fireplace is not necessarily a really easy like weekend thing for you to do it's a whole thing so to get rid of a corner fireplace is annoying and expensive so please stop doing them thanks okay next up on my list is going to be popcorn ceiling i had a few people that said that they like popcorn ceiling but i think the overwhelming consensus of the world is that they're not great they're really ugly and we should not have them anymore they are usually i think really cheap to do and they cover up a lot of the imperfections that might be uh, through the building process but again if you sort of do a really good job with the ceiling then maybe you don't need to cover up the imperfections as much you know, like I think it's just focus on that as opposed to the covering up popcorn ceiling cheap way of doing things. They are dust collectors, they get brown and gross and they're really annoying to clean because the popcorn just ends up like rubbing off. Like they're just not overall a good idea. I think we're done with the popcorn ceiling. But again, they're difficult to get rid of. You can theoretically DIY, I have seen it done. Some people do be very, very careful about making sure you have the right equipment, the masking, whatever, because you want to be really careful. You know, it's not something I, I wouldn't feel comfortable DIYing it and I wouldn't necessarily recommend it for you unless you know what you're doing. So you can theoretically DIY it, just be very careful, but you're probably going to be paying somebody to come into your space and make the worst mess you can possibly imagine. So your furniture is either gonna be covered up or most likely if you really care about your furniture, you're gonna move it all out to a different place, which could be absolutely a whole process and it's really, really difficult to get rid of popcorn ceiling. So I would just say, stop doing it and just paint them flat. That's all we want. Like we just want a flat ceiling, okay? So just stop doing the popcorn. Thanks. Okay, next up on my list is going to be no ceiling lights. This one is an annoyance that has plagued many different places that I have lived in, including this one in actually in our primary bedroom. What is with builders that think that you don't want any light anywhere in the ceiling? Do you know what I mean? Like I'm seeing this more and more and more, and I think it's because, I don't know, is it because people just want floor lamps? And listen, I love floor lamps. I like floor lamps, a good task lamp. You know, I love a, love a, love a table lamp or a whatever. We love all those Thing. But I usually do want a light in the center of my ceiling. I just want a light, okay? I want a light. And builders for a while now have just been, I don't know if it's to save on electrical, I really doubt it. I think it's just because people want that clean flat ceiling and they're not interested in having any lighting at all. I usually do, give me a light. You know, I just want one light in the center of the room. That's not the only light I want. I would like to play around with different types of lights so I can create a really dynamic lighting plan. Yes, that's what I want to do. But I still do want that light in the center of the room. And it is really, really annoying when developers and builders just don't put them in at all. And I'm just saying, give us that one light in the center of the room, especially in the primary bedroom. Because if we have a beautiful flat ceiling, because let's say hopefully we don't have popcorn ceiling, it is very annoying to have to run electrical back through the wall, through the freaking ceiling, to actually wire a new ceiling light 
into your primary bedroom. So I find it really annoying and expensive to have to fix that problem when I feel like if you just put the electrical in, it would really just make our lives so much easier. So please just put that one light in. That's all we ask. Everything else is fine. We can make the rest our own. I'm just saying that one piece is really gonna help us out. Okay, next on my list, in a similar vein, but the opposite problem, stop putting in 10,000 pot lights into a space. Listen, we want a well-lit space for sure, but some of these basements or living rooms or whatever, just you have clearly gone pot light crazy. And I think that the right amount of pot lights is an amount that lights the space adequately. So again, not zero, we talked about that, but also not 500. You know what I mean? Like somewhere in the middle there, there is an answer where I feel we're all gonna be happy, where we have an adequate amount of light, but we're also not overwhelmed and blinded when we walk into a room. Some of these basements, especially, you walk in and it just feels like you're in a hospital because everything is just pot light crazy. And they've got like the, like the really like super 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 white walls and the wall the lights just bouncing all over the place and I'm absolutely overwhelmed and I'm just like you know put a put a good amount of pot lights in I can't tell you what that number is that's your job so tell me what, the, what is the right amount of pot lights for that particular space and don't overdo it because some of these are just absolutely overwhelming too much too much that's it for me for today guys i hope you really enjoyed this video so comment below on what you wish builders would sort of change those kind of builder basic classics and again like i'm not i'm not against all the aesthetic choices that they make they might not be my taste but that's fine it's the really difficult ones to change out that really get me so comment below and let me know what you think and thank you also to my patrons and if you want to check out this video here i think you might really enjoy it it's kind of in a similar vein talking about renovation so i think you might like that one see y'all in the next video thanks bye